The exponential growth of solar worldwide has done some remarkable things, but people haven't really noticed this. Over the next few years, solar is on track to be installed at such a rapid pace that more solar panels will be installed over the next two to three years than the entire fleet of nuclear reactors worldwide combined times eight. Put all the nuclear together, times it by eight, and there'll be more solar installed just over the next two to three years. In 2024, solar power grew exponentially. Now, what this means is that analysts are now saying by 2035, around 50% of the world's electricity will come from solar. And that's not because of things like people wanting to save the planet, uh, people being concerned for the environment. It's simply because of economics. Now, many, many different experts now have predicted that solar will become the largest source of energy in the world. And it's really thanks to the declining price of the solar panels themselves, the increasing efficiency of the solar panels, and at the same time, the improved longevity of solar. What this has mean, meant is that solar has hit a tipping point in many locations around the world. And in fact, we're actually on the crucial part of the S-curve where a technology disruption happens at a much, much faster pace. Remember when iPhones first came out? They were pretty expensive. I remember I, I didn't get one, the iPhone 1. It was a bit out of my price range. And I was like, wow, that's really cool. Wish I could navigate with my phone like that. Love it. But um, I'm going to stick with my old Nokia 3310. It was crap. I, you know, I didn't like it. But I couldn't really afford an iPhone. It took a few years until everyone began buying them. And that's what's about to happen. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to have you with us. Thanks for supporting the channel. I really appreciate it. Now, I should mention, I do have a solar system here. I know many of you who have been watching the channel already know this, but we do have a lot of new subscribers on the channel. I have a pretty large solar system. It's about 25.6 kilowatt, in, well, about exactly 25.6 kilowatt, 56 panels. You don't need a solar system that big, but I pay nothing for electricity, even without a battery pack. Now, having a battery would be good. I'd like to get one. But at this point in time, you can save an incredible amount of money. Even if you don't do what I did, even my dad, who has a pretty small solar system, I think it's an eight kilowatt system, he was in, on his last bill over the last three months. He was in credit by $100. He just sent me a text message yesterday letting me know that over the last 12 months, he's in credit by around about $200, right? That's with a small system. So it, it is a game changer and it can massively reduce your bills. Here's the thing. Many people don't know this. For some reason, for some bizarre reason, even though solar is actually significantly more expensive in the United States, there is data showing, and it was widely published last year, that the average US customer of solar will save around 55 to 60,000 US dollars. That's, I mean, Australians, that's nearly $100,000 over the life of their solar system. And that's in spite of the fact that solar is double or triple the price in the United States versus what it costs here in Australia. For some reason, most people don't install solar, but that is beginning to change. A recent essay in The Economist speaks of solar power in glowing terms, declaring that the technology's exponential growth will do no less than change the world. That claim might sound fantastical, but statistics certainly bolster the argument. For one, solar panels which occupy an area around half that of Wales will provide the world with about 6% of its electricity in 2024, or three times as much electrical energy as the United States consumed 70 years ago. That's crazy. Now guys, I should mention uh, my solar system, if you want to use the company that I used, they're called Resync Solar. Unfortunately, they're not in America. They're here in Australia, but I'll put a link to the company in the description below. Anyhow, solar is just at that tipping point right now. Installed solar capacity is doubling every three years and increases tenfold every decade, says The Economist, but those numbers are speeding up. The next tenfold increase, according to the magazine, will be equivalent to multiplying the world's entire fleet of nuclear reactors by eight. Uh, times all of the nuclear reactors by eight. And that'll happen in less time than it typically takes to build just a single nuclear reactor. So within a few years time, 
the world is going to build more solar than all of our nuclear reactors combined by a factor of eight times eight. Can you see how this nuclear pipe dream actually sounds pretty damn ridiculous considering everything I've mentioned so far? With this kind of growth, solar energy is likely to become the globe's largest source of electrical power by the mid-2030s, says The Economist. Now, that's probably a really a pessimistic prediction. Many people believe it'll hit 50% by around 2034. Milestones are coming even sooner. In January, the US Energy Information Administration, the EIA, released an outlook that projected solar to be the leading source of growth in the US electric power sector. The EIA added that solar will supply almost all growth in US electricity generation through 2025 as hydropower and natural gas make smaller gains and as coal falls. That increase will boost solar's share of the total US electricity generation from 4% in 2023 to 7% in 2024, and to well over 10% in 2025. Yes, it's true though, the United States is way behind other countries like Australia, where solar makes up a much larger share of our electrical grid. The EIA previously predicted that solar's annual electricity generation would surpass that of hydropower in the United States in 2024. The good news keeps coming. A July 2023 report by RMI predicted that wind and solar projects will generate at least 33% of global electricity by 2030. But we're now on track to exceed that by 2029. If the growth follows the Earth's curve typical of technological revolutions, if growth continues at the faster exponential rate that it is looking like it will, Solar and wind generation will quadruple to 14,000 terawatt hours by 2030 and surpass fossil fuel supply. So five years from now, solar and wind will supply more power than all of the world's fossil fuels combined. Either way, this, the COP28 goal to triple renewable energy generation capacity to at least 11,000 gigawatts by 2030, thus limiting greenhouse gas emissions and putting us closer to Paris Agreement benchmarks, is attainable. In fact, it is unquestionably realistic. As RMI notes, recent systems change lab research shows that Denmark, Lithuania, and Uruguay have ramped up solar and wind generation at a rate faster than what's needed to limit global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius. The rest of the world can do it as well. Even better, the increase in solar energy capacity comes amid a decrease in solar energy costs. Solar power is already the cheapest form of, a, of electricity production, according to RMI. But the organization predicted that solar's cost will fall from $40 per megawatt hour to as low as $20 per megawatt hour, meaning solar panels will come down in price by around 50% over the next few years. Now, that is extremely likely considering the fact that they also came down in price by 50% over the past two years. Exponential growth of clean energy is an unstoppable force that will put more spending power in the pockets of consumers, RMI senior principal Kingsmill Bond said in a press release. The benefit of rapid renewable deployment is greater energy security and independence plus long-term energy price deflation because this is a manufactured technology. The more you install, the cheaper it gets. Moore's law in action. Now, the only reason that some grids around the world uh, that have more renewables installed at this point in time have become more expensive is simply because, well, of the overlords running those grids. There are very powerful electricity companies who are basically charging you more than they should be. Christiana Fugiers former Executive Secretary of the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change and co-founder of Global Optimism, added that the target of a tripling of renewable electricity investment by 2030 is definitely deliverable. But only by removing barriers to faster renewable deployment from streamlining permitting to redirecting subsidies for polluting energy, she said. Otherwise, the exponential growth we are seeing and the benefits that come with it could be derailed unnecessarily. What will happen with a Trump administration? Well, nobody knows, but you can still do your bit. Even if Trump puts tariffs and things on, you can still buy solar panels. You can still contribute to the global change and the global movement that's happening. 
The solar power revolution comes with challenges. Some of those challenges are infrastructure, some of them are technology, but they are being solved. There's a terawatt of solar capacity waiting to be connected to the US grid, a terawatt waiting. And solar power also needs storage solutions to get the grid through hours without daylight, the economist says. However, there is plans to build an increase in batteries in 2025 of 7,200%, a 7,200% increase versus 2024. That's just the actual contracts that have been signed with battery manufacturers. There are other issues such as geopolitics though. China produces the vast majority of solar panels and the US has put tariffs on Chinese made solar equipment. However, as RMI says, barriers haven't stopped solar's exponential growth so far. This is a clear signal to policymakers, businesses and investors to seize the opportunity of accelerating the energy transition.